Hello, my name is Lachlan, and today I'll be discussing how aging population threatens economic growth and prosperity. The most common way to portray a nation's demography is through what's called a population pyramid. Here are some examples of a typical healthy demography. Young people at the bottom, middle-aged people in the middle, and elderly at the top. Simple mortality makes this a pyramid. Aging populations are important in analysing a nation's economy because of the simple fact that we as individuals interact with our economy differently depending on what age group we belong to. Firstly, you have your young workers, people roughly aged between 20 to 45. This segment of the population are in the stages of going to university, having kids, buying houses, cars, etc. This population factors for most of the consumption and growth in a consumer-led economy. The second segment are mature workers people roughly aged 40 to 65. Comparatively, consumption is lower, but they are also highly skilled and on average earn a higher wage. This is where a large amount of the private investment in an economy comes from. Thirdly, you have retirees. This group generates the least amount of growth as they are no longer in the workforce and their consumption is also the lowest per capita. Investment in consumption is low, both due to behavior, but mostly due to a nasty habit of them dying off. The effects a population has on an economy should be clear now. The next question is, what happens when a demography is unhealthy? This is a common occurrence in first world nations where birth rates have been dropping for the past half century. Typical bulges form where mature workers make up for a disproportionate amount of both the workforce and consumers. These investment-led economies are typically capital rich, but of much lower consumption. Their aging population goes a long way to explain the size of a nation's welfare state and the direction of government spending. But there are major consequences for future growth and prosperity when there is an absent replacement generation which can't support it. The most egregious example of this is the Japanese demographic. They count as the world's oldest population, and the effects of this aging can be seen in their recent history of growth, or lack thereof. In the following 30 years, Japan will see a move into mass retirement, and the strains on the economy will saddle the government with a large burden of retirees leading to a fall in consumption, a fall in investment, coupled with a drastic increase in government spending to avoid economic collapse. A response to the dwindling levels of workers by Japan can be seen in their specialization in automation and robotics, an industry well suited to high levels of investment capital and large holes to fill left by a dwindling population of workers. The situation facing Japan now might be around the corner for other nations, and not just in the first world. China is notable for its population situation being a direct result of policy, and their aging population is a threat to the continuation of their economic growth and prosperity. In the time since their adoption of the one-child policy, China has experienced an unprecedented explosion in growth, both in consumption and investment. It has propelled it to the second largest economy in the world by real GDP, but this primarily led consumption growth, as suggested by their population pyramid, is fleeting, as their bulge of workers will evolve into mass retirement over the next 20 years. The disadvantage of China's government is that it is a much poorer state compared to Japan. The question facing China will be if they are able to fund hundreds of millions of retirees who are no longer contributing to economic growth. Most of the developed world is experiencing differing levels of population aging, yet they are all consistently getting older. Policy remedies are difficult, seeing it takes 20 years and 9 months to create a new young worker and sufficient capital to create an educated one. There are not many solutions for governments beyond attracting migration and subsidizing parenthood. Even then, it might not be enough for most nations who are looking at to prevent a disappearing workforce. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this presentation and hopefully you have a better idea of how an aging population threatens economic growth and prosperity.